So hi to um, Knight uh, Hacking from Oridev again. And now we have a new guest, uh, Sander Mock. Hi. So hi, and could you please introduce yourself? So what are you doing? Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Sander, and I work at uh, Luminous, which mm -hmm. is a software consultancy firm in uh, the Netherlands. And um, uh, at the Erdev conference, I gave a talk about uh, Java 9, and especially uh, the module system, and what it means to migrate to modules, and what it means to migrate to Java 9. And uh, that's basically uh, uh, one of the things that I've been very busy with uh, in mm -hmm. the past few months or years, uh, because together with um, a friend of mine, uh, Paul Bakker, I wrote a book mm -hmm. about that for O'Reilly, Java 9 Modularity. And uh, essentially, the talk was uh, just based on, uh, on what we learned there. Based on that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, the, the key takeaway, so since uh, Java 9 is maybe not the, you know, most popular <laughs> version so far, sure, um, so, yeah. so how is that going with the modularity uh, in projects or from your experience? Yeah, yeah. So uh, at Luminous, uh, we always really valued modular software development. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, before modules were there in Java, we already used uh, things like OCI, etc. And uh, it was only natural to check out what was coming, of course, in, right. in the future uh, of Java uh, with rega regard to uh, modularity. Right. So, um, yeah, like you said, I mean, um, uh, it will take a while before the ecosystem moves towards mm -hmm. uh, modular development. Uh, but I do th uh, truly think that uh, yeah, people will see the advantages and that slowly but surely we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, it doesn't help that, of course, Java 9 uh, isn't really a long term support release mm -hmm. as, uh, as it turned out. Um, but still, uh, even if you're saying uh, I'll wait until Java 10 or Java 11 to do the upgrades, I mean, you will encounter the same issues. It will there. still have the modularity. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it will same be, it still be the same modular JDK that's underneath. And uh, even if you're not going to use modules in your own application, mm -hmm. you're still running on top of the modular JDK, uh, which brings its own challenges if you want to migrate sort of older code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. So we have one uh, copy actually here yeah, yeah. of your uh, book. Exactly. Um, could you say a few, just a few sentences about it, like uh, maybe about the structure and the key yeah. takeaway? Yeah. So the book itself has been uh, structured into three parts. Um, in the first part, we sort of dissect the modular JDK, uh -huh. how is it structured and how do modules actually okay, work? Uh -huh. So and how can you create your own modules? Right. And then in the second part, we focus on migration scenarios because we all have mm -hmm. lots of code around and right. um, want to take that to the next level as well. Um, and essentially, that's a two-step process. Mm -hmm. You have a current application that you run under the Java 8 or mm -hmm. earlier class path, and you would like to bring that to Java 9, right. also on the class path, because it's still there, of course, in, in Java 9 as well. And uh, there are some things that, sh uh, things that you can encounter there, and uh, we describe that. And then, of course, um, if you want to really uh, modularize your application, you can take the next step and actually turn your code into modular mm -hmm. codes using Java 9 modules. So that's also part of the migration process that we uh, describe. And then in the last part, uh, we focus on, on tools like build tools, mm -hmm. uh, but also on new tools added to the JDK. Uh, for example, there's a tool called JLink, which mm -hmm. you can use to create uh, what they call uh, custom runtime images, mm -hmm. for example, uh, which is a fairly nice mechanism to create a self-contained sort of distribution mm -hmm. of your application modules and just the platform modules that your application needs. And uh, so all kinds of tools like that um, uh, are part of the, uh, the, uh, the last part of the book. Yeah. Wow, that sounds really interesting. And it sounds like it's really applicable to real world projects, right? So sure. not only the theory and how you would use it ideally in We're a shiny trying to make a very practical project. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. So there's there's a also sort of a case study in the uh, second migration part. So mm -hmm. it's not just about the technical and uh, theoretical issues that you can encounter, but we mm -hmm. actually take a, an application that's based on Spring and Hibernate, so real frameworks that are used right. in the real right. world. And uh, we take this from... Uh, yeah, the old class path situation mm -hmm. to ultimately a, a modular application on top of Java 9. Yeah. Wow, very interesting. Very nice. Um, is it the, your first time at the Oradev conference here? Uh, no, actually, it's my second time here. So uh, last year, um, uh, I was talking about, uh, well, sort of the same uh, topic, mm -hmm. uh, only uh, things weren't as clear uh, right. right then because, well, <laughs> <It's final. laughs> yeah, we all know that a lot of work went in, in, into Jigsaw and to Absolutely. the module system and lots of changes, etc. So it was nice to actually come back and, and mm -hmm. give sort of a talk that, uh, that really reflects uh, the current situation. Yeah. Very nice. Um, so, for the, uh, for example, for the live audience who cannot attend uh, the Oradev conference mm -hmm. here, um, what is your takeaway and what is your um, impression of of the conference? So, mm -hmm. what I really like about Oradev is that um, it's it's so broad and diverse in its mm -hmm. topics, right? So, I speak a lot of more Java-specific conferences as well. 
but here you really get to mingle with people from different crowds as well, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, uh, AI and uh, VR developers to uh, Microsoft yeah. World, etc. Yeah. And the other thing I really like about Eurodev is that they uh, they really have uh, quite good and quite inspiring keynotes. Mm -hmm. So uh, really something yeah that gives you food for thought. So right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very nice. All right, so thank you, Sander, for, for the nice interview. You're welcome. And for everybody watching, thanks for watching, and bye. Bye-bye.